<laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of WP Roundtable, where the jokes got started before we go live. And uh, so now for the boring part, I'm Jason Crawford, and here's everybody else. Hey, this is Rich Robinkoff from tropical, balmy Cleveland, Ohio. This is Kellen Mace tuning in from the east side of Michigan, Metro Detroit area. Um, hey guys, I'm Kyle. Uh, and uh, I'm in Jackson, Michigan. It's great. It's great here. Jackson's awesome. And you know what else is awesome? Our guest, Mark Benzikey. He's super cool, and we're super glad to have him. Mark is uh, an awesome member of the WordPress community. Basically, everybody knows who he is and loves him. He's just like practically the most popular guy huh. there is um, in the world. And we've got him on the show to mark our 45th episode of the round table, so we're really, really excited, everybody cheer and stuff. Um, we've got uh, a whole bunch of questions for Mark, so before we get into those questions, Mark, why don't you tell us just a little bit about who you are and what you do. And uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mark Benzikate. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where it is a nice, warm three degrees, I think, right now. I don't know. I haven't actually stuck my nose out the window to find out in the last couple hours. Uh, I work with the awesome guys at ServerPress LLC, where we make Desktop Server, which is a local host development tool to create WordPress sites in about, oh, I don't know, five seconds or less. Five seconds or less. And we are huge fans of Desktop Server. You're basically looking at the fan club right here, the founding fathers of the fan club. Maybe something like that. So we're excited to uh, talk to you about that and all the other cool things that you do, Mark. And we're going to try to get into uh, as much detail as we can. Before we do, uh, at this part of the show, we always like to go into our quick picks of the week real quick. Everybody's going to talk about something relevant and topical that they recommend that uh, any audience, um, anyone in the audience, check out. So I'll give you my quick pick of the week. Um, it's a blog post by a former guest of the show, Chris Klazowski was on episode 30 of the show several months back, and he wrote a cool blog post following WordCamp San Francisco about how to use desktop server and run the trunk version of WordPress, which is really awesome and a really good idea if you are doing development and developing new um, things like plugins and themes to run the latest, the cutting-edge version of WordPress before it's even released. And so he wrote a little tutorial about that, which I think is really sweet. So I put a link on the event page Check it out. All right. Jason? All right, I guess I can go. Um, mine is a podcast from Content Warfare Podcast, and uh, it's their episode 113. And I just picked this out because I know it's something that somewhat we've discussed before, but they go into demystifying the business side of online marketing. Um, it seems kind of high fluting and all that stuff, but a lot of stuff they go into is, is dealing with clients. and uh, But a lot of they're talking about being on the client side and what you should expect from web developers and designers and how to work with them <coughs> and, uh, and how, to, how to cover your backside, I suppose. Uh, so I think it was really a good insight on our end to pay attention to that and really... Things like uh, making sure that the owners of the site know that they own that domain, and if they're not going to own that domain, then you need to find a new job yourself, and uh, and make sure that they know how to access it, and things like that that, that sometimes we can uh, let slip by just because we do it all the time, and clients need the, the concerns that clients have. So that was my podcast. I thought it was a great one, uh, and so I recommend it for this week. And my pick of the week is the Prestige Conference. It's coming up this weekend in Las Vegas. Now, I realize you can't just pick up and go to Las Vegas. One of the nice things about the Prestige Conference is that they have streaming tickets. Now, Prestige Conference, we had Kiko Duran on a few weeks ago, and I know he talked about it, but I wanted to bring it back up since it's coming. And it's all about business and career development for freelancers, entrepreneurs, um, there's some great speakers. I'm looking at the list now. I mean, you got Jake Goldman and Chris Lemus starting it off, Corey Miller, Norcross, uh, and just who's who. Pippin's there. So it's just a great lineup. So i got to make sure I pick up my uh, live stream ticket tonight for 69 bucks. And uh, it, it, I wish I could be in Vegas this weekend. It'd be a lot warmer than it is here. But make sure you uh, pick up your ticket, and uh, you can watch the recordings for six months, so you don't actually have to watch it this weekend. If you're lucky enough 
Fly out to Vegas, too. Go for it. PrestigeConf.com. That's it. All right, cool. I'll dive in next um, with another recommendation for a blog post. Um, this would be kind of a more developer-centric one. Um, this is a tour of the WordPress database. Um, this is probably one of the clearest, um, most you know, easy to digest um, posts I've ever seen on, on the WordPress database, just the different tables that are in it and how each is related to the other one um, and the different pieces of metadata that are stored in each of those tables. You know, it kind of breaks it down really, really nicely. Um, so this is just four days old. It was published, um, and it's on deliciousbrains.com slash tour WordPress database with dashes in between them. But really highly recommend it. I learned um, a thing or two browsing through this and I uh, think you will, too, so check it out. Awesome. Mark? Oh, my turn. Um, <clears throat> my pick of the week, or pick of my show, whatever you want to call it, uh, is a, a group of people. It's a nonprofit called Girl Develop It, and uh, I'm going to read directly off their site because I want to do justice as to what they are. I think it's a great thing. Girl Develop It is a nonprofit organization that exists to provide affordable and accessible programs for women interested in learning web and software development. They use uh, mentorship and hands-on instruction, and it helps women of diverse backgrounds reach their goals. Their vision is to create a network of empowered women who are confident in their abilities to code and build beautiful web applications. Through teaching women around the world to learn software development, they can help them improve their careers and confidence they carry with them in their everyday lives. And I know uh, a few uh, people that are involved with this organization, and they're fantastic people, and the organization uh, is starting to get some traction. So I'm, I'm really happy for that. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Mark. I've heard a lot about Girl Development, too, and I think it's really, really cool. And I'd really like to um, get somebody uh, who represents it to come on the show at some point in the future. So if you know anybody you can put me in touch with, please I do. do. Um, I think uh, you, uh, uh, I was going to say this uh, for the part in the show where you ask who I would recommend as uh, an interview uh, for, for uh, the show. And uh, Natalie McLeese, uh, who works uh, out in L.A., she is awesome. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, she'd be happy to be on the show. Great. Thank you for that recommendation. We'll come back to that question a little more later, too, and talk about that. So, um, thanks I was for trying that. to kill two birds with one stone there. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, we'll be dropping our links to all of these quick picks in the, uh, on the event page. A couple of them are already there. Um, and so now let's move into asking questions about Mark. Uh, Mark, we've got a lot that we want to know. We've got a long, long, long list of questions. We could be here for a few days, so I hope you uh, don't have to use the bathroom. I hope you ate. I'm I'm done with all that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Great. All right. So we're gonna try to hit you hard and fast with all of these questions and uh, and get right down to the details. So um, let's start by having you give us kind of the long and winding road, but not the long version, of how you came to be where you are today. Um, just fast track us through your your interesting and uh, up and down career journey to get to this this role and. Uh, with server press? Um, well, I started uh, when I was 10 years old, roughly. Uh, my dad was a university professor, and uh, they had this thing called the mainframe computer system. And I started, I got an account uh, there because my dad was on the faculty, and I started programming at about age 10. My dad started paying me, he was the chair of his department, he started paying me to create quizzes and things like that for his students, uh, mostly to keep me out of trouble because, although I thought I was making bank at 50 cents an hour, but um, <clears throat> little did I know that was child labor and all that. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I, I had gotten the bug at that point, and I kind of stayed in technology throughout most of my life. I uh, got into and saw the whole PC revolution. Um, and uh, then in the 90s, I got involved in, uh, with an internet service provider. Uh, we built a, an ISP from the ground up kind of back in the Wild West days of ISPs and independence and, and all that. Um, in about 2000, that was in Southern California. And then in about 2003 or 2004, we moved to Wisconsin. Uh, and uh, 
I did a variety of things that had to do with technology. In uh, 2009, I believe, I started getting into WordPress. My first WordPress site was actually, I found a, um, a plug-in that helped you with uh, setting up websites to do affiliate marketing with eBay sites and actually had uh, some success with that. But more importantly, I realized at that point in time that, hey, WordPress could be used for a lot more than just blogging, which I think is kind of the, uh, the path that a lot of us go with WordPress. We start out with, hey, this is a blog thing, and then you, you discover that it can be so much more with uh, just some tweaks and plugins and, and then learning you know, some PHP and, and various things. And um, I got into WordPress development, and then uh, I started using Desktop Server myself as a customer. Um, and uh, my partner, Greg, who is also part of the Server Press team, um, is the one who introduced me to desktop server and, and knew Steve real well. He's the guy who is the architect of desktop server, Steve. And uh, Steve is just this amazing programmer. And uh, we got to know Steve pretty well and um, decided to reform the company as a partnership uh, in June of 2013 and have been going gangbusters <laughs> since. So that's, that's the long and winding short story. Awesome. So that's cool uh, and interesting how that uh, how that came about. So tell us a little bit about what your role is. What what are you responsible for at ServerPress? Um, I mostly deal with a lot of the business development side of things. Um, I also handle all the uh, financial aspects of it. Um, and uh, then you'll see me uh, running around uh, at WordCamps every now and then and, and uh, pontificating for about 40 minutes or sponsoring, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, I don't actually do that much in the development end. Uh, this has been Steve's baby since day one, and uh, the reality is uh, there is no way I will ever be the coder that Steve is. So uh, I stick to what my strengths are. Awesome. So, uh, so Mark, you know, he you're the business guy, the finance guy for server press. What's uh, for desktop server? What's your uh, what's your day like? What do you usually do? <clears throat> okay, well, I work at home as so many of us do, and uh, I think uh, my my average day is actually a pretty structured day because it has to be. Uh, we have five children here at the house, three of which uh, we just recently took in in October of last year. And uh, so in order for things to run smoothly, uh, we have to keep things uh, on, a, on a schedule. So my day starts at about 6 or 6.30 in the morning. Uh, we get the kids up, ready for school, get them out the door. My wife takes them to school. My wife also works at home. Uh, and the whole goal is to be at our desks by 8 o'clock in the morning. I spend the day doing a little bit of customer support, although Greg really handles the majority of the customer support issues, and uh, dealing with any emails and whatnot uh, that go on. I pop in and kind of say good morning to all the people that I have in the various Slack channels uh, just to, uh, to see if there's anything new and exciting going on. A lot of times uh, people will point out any new articles that might have been written about All right, so that's a little weird. We got cut off there, and we are back. Somehow, some way, we had to create an entirely new event. We hope that everybody from the other event has figured it out by now. And yes. I don't know where we were. Okay. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, the world just missed the most just, like, earth-shattering conversation we've ever we've ever had with any guest ever. Mark Benzkeen just just told us all kinds of incredible things. It was really, really enlightening, very compelling stuff. Um, but we weren't live. So, hey, can you, can you guys see me at all? I'm having issues. Or, no. Okay. <laughs> We're going to spend all day uh, doing this. This is cool. Hang on. Now I don't have to talk about myself. Give me just a second. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, all right, so... Yeah, so this is awesome. Um, 
For anybody that ever sees this in the future, we somehow got dropped off of being live, and we have run into all sorts of okay. Google problems, but this is what happens when we try to do things live, and I don't think any of us really should be doing anything live. I mean, uh, we should really be like stuck in a padded room and be able yeah. to push the safe buttons. Hey, I I'm here. I'm, I'm back now. You can, you can talk about me again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, could, let's well, go back to talking about Mark. Let's just let's just pretend all that didn't happen. So uh -huh. had such an issue. It's forty-five episodes into the show. I apologize to anyone who watched. Hey, you know what? Back to Mark. I, I just want to say that this is a this is clearly a me thing with Carrie Dills. You know, <laughs> she went offline. So you know, at some point, you have to look at the common denominator here. And I'm trying to be objective, uh, but um, I'm thinking this might be a me thing. I might be the world's worst podcast guest. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh man, I am. I am so sorry, but you've got a point, Mark. You've got a point. I, I think I do. I, I, you know what? Hey, I'm all about being realistic here. So you know. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Mark, right, right before um, we went off air a moment ago, you were you were explaining um, your role at ServerPress, and then we started to talk about your family a mm -hmm. little bit, and you had some really really amazing things to say. Um, I was feeling quite inspired and, and uh, um, really enjoyed what you were talking about about your family and uh, the children that you and your wife have adopted and, and your story. Um, so it's a lot to ask you to repeat, but do you mind uh, summarizing a little bit of what you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to make it uh, quick, and um, <laughs> I, I'm never, ever as inspirational the second time around, just for the record. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, I, I was just, uh, I, I had talked about how we uh, moved to Milwaukee and we just recently, well, in October we took on three kids, a 10-year-old, a 3-year-old uh, who's a little bit special needs, and then at the time he was about a 4- or 5-month-old uh, baby, and they're siblings, and um, my wife and I moved to Milwaukee fully with the intent of uh, starting to either foster with the intent to adopt uh, children, mostly older kids or special needs kids, um, the kind that, that a lot of people tend to look over. My wife grew up in the foster care system and um, uh, literally um, had a, a really terrible childhood. Um, I, I can't even go into how bad it was because that's a show all of its own. Mm -hmm. And uh, she decided uh, around about high school that she was not going to be a victim of her circumstances and decided to change the path uh, that she was going to go through in life and, and has an, a ton to offer kids that may have been born uh, in less than the, the most fortunate of circumstance. And uh, she's been quite an inspiration to me because of what I've seen uh, that she's done with her life and uh, it, it, it just kind of blows my mind because I had a pretty you know a pretty uneventful uh, upbringing so uh, which I, which is to say I had a great childhood so um, so that's basically it we're also looking we have three that we took in on October and we're also looking to take uh, in another uh, three siblings soon, uh, so it's going to be uh, quite a house full of kids, but we're really excited to do it. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing all that, Mark. That's really, that's really, really inspiring. Um, we were also talking a little bit about how, uh, what a great time it was when you um, uh, attended WordCamp Ann Arbor last October yeah. and brought Eli and he kind of stole the show. Yes, uh, yeah. Kind of tackling one of your presentations to start off the event. And, yeah, uh, my, my son uh, Eli came with me to Ann Arbor. Uh, my goal really uh, with taking him to WordCamps is to show him that you can stay true to yourself, make a living, and work in a community environment where people support you and you and you can give back to them and support them. And uh, he certainly gave back to me <laughs> in that presentation, but um, it was a lot of fun, and he had a blast, and, and I do intend to, to bring him to more. Uh, by the way, he's nine years old, so um, I can't wait to see what, he, what he's like as a teenager. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. One of the more talked about characters, I think, from the whole event. And yeah. He's on our follow-up list to invite back for the 2015 year. You know, maybe maybe he'll he'll consider being a speaker himself. Yeah, I'll be his chaperone, and he can be the speaker. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so uh, moving on, we've got a whole bunch of things that uh, we want to dive into. Um, here's a question that I wanted to ask you about uh, because I've heard you tell stories in the past. I've heard you talk about some things related to this, so I wanted to ask about it. Um, and it has to about has to do with um, uh, doing it wrong, and uh, and in particular in the world of uh, WordPress development, uh, what does that mean to you uh, to uh, be a WordPress developer, especially a service provider or a product maker, and to be in your mind, doing it wrong, and what are the potential negative consequences, especially drawing on your experiences, from doing it wrong? Um, boy, that's a loaded question. Um, it's It really is so easy to do it wrong, to do anything wrong, uh, even though you know in your heart what's right, uh, because doing it wrong is the easiest uh, path right off the bat. Um, I'd almost start with right off the bat if you're if you're developing a site one of the worst things you can start off with is is choosing a poor host for example um, that can lead to problems not providing a decent scope of work to your clients and telling them what to expect and uh, you know I uh, Chris Lemma says it a million times, and he's absolutely right. Just saying no to your client sometimes, um, because it really boils down to your client has hired you as the expert, and every single time that you back down on a little bit uh, to quote unquote make the client happy, what you're doing is you're actually uh, marginalizing yourself as the expert. And and the more that you let them run the show, the the less of an expert you become. And um, I think most developers that have been and developers, designers, it doesn't really matter. If you're providing a work product that is a result of your hard labor, if you've been around the block a little bit, you know the right way to do things. So it's really just learning the right way to say no sometimes and the right way to guide your client to having that faith in you as, as the expert to provide them with the solution that they hired you for because they're paying you good money, hopefully good money. And as such, you're doing them a disservice by not being absolutely honest with them and, and, uh, and, and taking them down the right path. And it ends up costing time and money for everybody down the road. Uh, so it's, you know, that's kind of where I stand on the doing it wrong uh, thing. We all have our own workflow and whatnot, and I'm a big supporter of if you have a workflow that works for you, then go with it. Um, I don't care what it is as long as it works for you. But you know what that workflow is. Stick with it and stick to your guns. And sometimes it does mean that the client has to walk away or you have to let the client walk away but that's because you know what's right and it's going to save you a lot of heartache down the road right yeah a lot of good advice I appreciate that Mark and uh, you know um, I think you've learned a, you've uh, we've talked about this before and you've had good stories about learning val very valuable lessons of, about mistakes made on the job that mm -hmm. um, resulted in you making changes to your processes in the mm -hmm. company involved in just because you, you learned a hard lesson and you said we're not doing that again. Yeah, I wish I could say that this is all, you know, from wisdom from that I've gained from books, but unfortunately I I am a a student and still am a student uh, of the school of hard knocks. And that is unfortunately how I've learned all, a lot of the lessons. I like to learn, take and learn from other people's mistakes, but I certainly learn from my own uh, more often than I'd like to admit. Certainly, certainly. And I know um, a lot of us can speak to the lessons learned from, and this is a, a very, very, very not so subtle segue, but the lessons learned from not um, using a local development site. <laughs> nicely, a nicely done. Nice. Yeah. Plus one. Yeah. 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 Lessons learned. So yeah. um, I've had my lessons learned. I think you've had your lessons learned. And now you're uh, kind of spreading the good news. <laughs> uh, I mean, developers, I think you're kind of like this this 
apostle, you know, leading the charge to uh, advocate for professional development workloads, and and that's really awesome. So t why don't you uh, use this not so subtle segue and tell us a little bit about the product that des that ServerPress uh, offers. So our product is called Desktop Server. And Desktop Server is a product that, uh, if you're familiar with any type of local development tool, it is uh, a tool that allows you to create a, spin up a WordPress site on your local machine uh, in anywhere between 5 and 20 seconds, depending on how adept you are with clicking the next button um, and, and coming up with names. Um, it's, 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 you know, sometimes it's the naming part that's the hard part. Uh, that's why mine are like 1.dev, 2.dev, 3.dev. That way I don't have to think about it. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but it is really the, uh, the only one that's, uh, that I know of that's really built specifically for a WordPress environment. Currently, Desktop Server is for a WordPress environment. It's cross-platform, meaning that it works on both Windows and on Mac, uh, we are working on a version that will work with Linux, and um, so we'll be truly cross-platform, and uh, and it's an awesome product. I used it. The only thing I used more than that before getting involved with ServerPress was uh, actually my my code editor, um, and and uh, with server Pre with desktop server being my second most used uh, piece of software. And um, I felt from day one that it was worth the money that I spent on it. And I feel, as a result, totally fortunate that I get to be involved with the company now. Cool, Mark. Um, we have a question next for you. I um, mean, you touched on this briefly. We kind mm -hmm. of hit um, on it in passing, I think. But um, what sets desktop server apart from all the other options for local departments? Uh, development. You know, there's MAMP and WAMP and mm -hmm. XAMP and uh, Vagrant is, you mm -hmm. know, has gained some popularity. Sure. Um, what's special about Desktop Server? Well, Desktop Server is um, a perfect example is um, we, we already brought up Eli, my nine-year-old son. Last year at WordCamp Milwaukee, I brought him, by the way, WordCamp Milwaukee, uh, I think is going to be late July. Put it on your calendar. Um, anyway, I... Uh, the nice thing about Desktop Server is I actually installed Desktop Server on my son's computer. I did not tell him what it did. He really had very little idea of what WordPress was. I said, open it up and see if you can figure out what it does. Truly, within four minutes, he had a WordPress site up and running on his local computer without me telling him a single thing about what the software did. So, A, you have the ease of use um, right off the bat. Uh, one of the features that people really appreciate about it is it has ability to do direct deploy. So once you've created your site locally, uh, you can direct deploy it to, uh, say, for instance, a cPanel host or something like that with just a couple of clicks. It's very simple to deploy it live. Um, removing, it makes all your host entries for you so you don't have to get into your host file and do anything like that. It creates your database for you. You don't have to create database passwords or anything like that. Um, and uh, one of the great features that uh, I really like about desktop servers is you can create blueprints. Uh, what a blueprint is, is let's say that you are a developer and you like a specific framework and you've got your framework set up out of the box a certain way that you like it and you use a certain set of plugins and this and that and the other thing. You can take that local developed um, setup and you can put it out to a blueprint. So every time that you run desktop server, you can use that blueprint, and you can have that starting point every single time within you know the same amount of time as it would to, to start up a blank WordPress site. It's very cool. So if you, if you use the blueprint feature, um, how does desktop server handle um, plugin updates and things? Does it just well, only save the most recent one? Then. No, I mean, what you would have to do is you would have to create a locally, uh, you'd have to set up that local blueprint, install it locally, do the updates, and then recreate another blueprint, which is done with the export feature within desktop server. So okay. it's still a pretty quick and easy uh, process. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And, uh, and also, the other thing is you can bring down live sites really easily. We uh, support a whole bunch of formats like Backup Buddy, Duplicator, things like that. If you take one of those files, uh, Desktop server has the ability to import it locally. Uh, once again, uh, fairly uh, brain damage free. So, 
Yeah. So um, why don't we take a quick step back, Mark? Can you just like elaborate just a little bit, uh, maybe for those who are curious, uh, about why is local development just so important? Why is like that such a big part of the real professional developer's workflow? Why does that matter so much? Um, I would say two things. Uh, speed and peace of mind are the two things that come to mind. The peace of mind is probably bigger than the speed. Uh, when you're working locally, you can you know, build, break, and fix your website all you want, and nobody sees it. So you can save yourself a ton of embarrassment. Uh, that code that you put in that brought up the white screen of death, uh, nobody will see but you. Um, and meanwhile, you can have a live site up and running that, you know, once you've done your tests locally, you can push those live and, uh, and, and make sure everything's tested. Uh, let's say WordPress comes out with a new core, you know, because every once in a while I, I understand WordPress um, puts out a new uh, core product. Is that right? I, I think that's <laughs> accurate about while. WordPress. I, I, I think it's like every two hours or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, um, you know, sometimes the reality is uh, some of the, the plugins might have deprecated code or something like that in it, and uh, you throw up the core, at, you know, the new, the new update, and all of a sudden things are broken. Or likewise, some, uh, you know, plugin, uh, uh, good plugin developers uh, support their product, which means a lot of times they, put out, they push out updates to their plugins. And uh, you, you want to test those in a safe environment, and a local environment is an ideal place to do it. Uh, you don't need the crappy airplane Wi-Fi if you're on a plane and you've got to get some work done. You don't need to mess with that in order to do local development. Um, there, there are a, a ton of uh, advantages when it comes to using local development in your workflow. Uh, without a doubt, and uh, and of course it's faster because it's not using the internet. It's all local. It's right there on your system. But well, what if you want to be a cowboy, Mark? <laughs> you know, if you want to be a cowboy, then be a cowboy. Just don't, you know. I, I mean, I hey, it's a free country, you know. And and if you want to be a cowboy and cowboy code, uh, I, I have a slide in one of my presentations that basically says cowboy coding is stupid. But you know, I I can only do so much. <laughs> so, Agreed. you know, you're talking about some of the features, and and they're really cool the way they stand now. I know there's been some chatter about uh, upcoming release of your wonderful software suite. Something about a 4.0. Can you give us anything about what's coming? I know it's been testing. Yeah, we are in uh, beta testing on 4.0. Um, we have a working almost feature complete beta of the Mac version. We are uh, hacking at the code in order to be able to uh, have the Windows version working. The Linux version is, is not going to be too difficult. Um, the big thing about uh, Desktop Server 4.0 is it is going to be built uh, it's an application that's actually built upon WordPress. So it's a complete departure architecturally from what our current version is. What that allows us to do is it allows us to create uh, plugins and, and uh, configure desktop server kind of to do whatever we want and fit within anybody's workflow. It's also going to be uh, a little bit more community driven so people will be able to develop plugins and, and other things for desktop server 4.0 to make it uh, sing and dance the way that they want it to sing and dance. Um, we have one more version of the current iteration of desktop server that is coming out shortly, which is going to have a few updates. And then we've decided as a company that we are going to uh, end of life it. And all efforts as of March are going to be put towards desktop server 4.0. That does not mean 4.0 will be out in March. It means all of our efforts will be. When do you uh, put think, if that. you had to throw a month or a season out there? Um, next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I feel very. I'll tell you. I feel very uncomfortable with giving a date because we are really. Let's face it, we're not Microsoft. We cannot no. afford to put out a good version of something and then a crap version and then a good version and then a crap version. We can only afford to put out good software. 
So we are going to take as long as it takes to make sure that what we push out the door is better than what you're already thrilled with. Sounds good. Yeah, we respect that. And uh, you've done a good job with it so far. And, and uh, nobody's complaining about, uh, or at least none of us are, about the current desktop server product, but we are certainly excited about 4.0. That's a, that's, that's a compelling feature, it sounds like. There is actually, on YouTube, I created a teaser video, uh, I don't know, a month ago or so, maybe a little bit longer, uh, showing off some of the, the features of Desktop Server 4.0. Uh, I would encourage everyone to go to YouTube, look for the Server Press um, channel, and I suppose you can put it in the show notes or whatever, and, uh, and pull up the video uh, with the uh, 4.0 teaser, and, uh, and let us know what you think. Um, we definitely listen to our customers as to what they want and, and try to implement that in future releases because, uh, frankly, you know, if it weren't for you guys out there giving us feedback, we might get kind of lost uh, with where we think the direction is for our product. I'll say there's a good chance I'm probably not going to go messing with any show notes or anything technical after tonight's uh, issues. I'm just going to let it ride and hope everything works out all right and... No scary show notes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, yeah. We we are sorry that that happened. But I've got a question for you, Mark. Okay. All right. So this is this is a two part question. So um, I want to know when it comes to advancing desktop server, you know, growing the business and and um, growing your user base for this mm -hmm. awesome piece of software. What have been your greatest technical challenges? Um, in making and, and enhancing and, and developing the software, and what have been your greatest non-technical challenges, more from the business pr perspective, in just you know proliferating this product and and, uh, and getting a wider audience? Um, on the technical challenges front, I would say one of the biggest issues that we run into, and and I I would almost uh, if I had to blame anything on. Uh, for the uh, kind of delay on 4.0's release, I would have to say it's outside forces that affect how we develop our product. Um, a, a perfect example, and I, I am going to name names here, but I, I have to. I'm, I, I'm going to disclaim it with saying they have been absolutely fantastic to work with. But last year, a perfect example was uh, I believe it was last summer. Backup Buddy came out with a new version. Uh, iThemes came out with a new version of Backup Buddy, and their um, and their format for their file change. Well, of course, Desktop Server. One of the selling features is you can import a Backup Buddy file. Well, guess what didn't work after uh, Backup Buddy uh, <laughs> um, came out with their new file structure. Um, I contacted Corey immediately, and, and I mean, we got it worked out within a couple of days. But it's things like that that come up where we kind of, um, you know, each company, they have to focus on what they do best, and they have to focus on improving their product. And it's not their responsibility necessarily to make sure that, everybody out there kind of approves of how they do things or is even brought in the loop on how they're going to do things. Uh, you know, they have to focus on their business. And so we certainly understand that. But the reality is, you know, things like that impact it. A new PHP version comes out. That affects us. You know, things like that. And um, so if, if there's a reason for the delay, a lot of times I like to say it's because we have, we have our customer base. We always have to handle our customers first. Our customer support is always our first priority. Well, when outside uh, things affect uh, our customer support or our customers, we have to address that first. And, it's, and, and so trying to create a new piece of software uh, sometimes it's kind of like uh, trying to do surgery, open heart surgery on a on a patient that needs to still be walking around while you're doing it, and uh, so that's you know I would say that's our biggest. It, it, it's it may be a little of both. Our biggest technical challenge and our biggest kind of operational challenge as well. That's super interesting. It really is fascinating to me how um, people in this space. And, and probably in a lot of other industries as well, developing software have to be so cons have to take into consideration so many other um, ap related applications. So for us right. in WordPress, you don't 
it's not it's not nearly enough. It's not enough to be successful to just say we're compatible with WordPress. You know, right. with, with the latest version or the last version of WordPress. Right. But I have to consider all those others that could be used in conjunction with your tool. You know, like you said, backup buddy and other mi migration or backup tools. Mm -hmm. um, to have to be compatible with each and every one of these mm -hmm. uh, for your for your software to be successful. Right. So um, it sounds so challenging. Well, challenging. yeah, and and our goal is always to provide not just what we promise the customer, but to surpass their expectations. And and I know that that sounds like a little bit of a line, but we really focus on that a lot. And so when things like this come up, you know, come up, we always have to go back and say, okay, is this a one issue deal, or is this going to impact a large part of our user base? And as our software has gained more and more traction over the last year, specifically, um, we we found ourselves in that position, you know, quite a bit, where we have to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, we really need to push this out. We really need to push this out. And of course, that delays other things that we had that we had on the board which rich going back to your original question is another reason why I kind of don't like to answer the when is it going to be out question yeah awesome so mark I got another question for you okay we all these I've got all so many questions but um, so I want to hear you talk about your predictions a little bit for the future you know so let's let's just like sit back and, and be realistic through the business development guy over here at server press and you're just you know, you're just letting us know what what you see in the future and the horizons. Like, so let's let's imagine the graph where you see mm -hmm. desktop servers growth and adoption rate and and uh, new users. And let's like just carry that graph out into the future. Where do you mm -hmm. see that arc going? Is it gonna keep you know, rising? It, plateau? it has it has continued to rise, which you know naturally makes me happy. Um, and we really try to keep our finger on the pulse of what the community wants from us so that we can continue to craft our product to, uh, to fill their needs. I think that our real goal in everything that we do, and we do have some new goods, and I wouldn't say goods, new services that we're going to be offering that go hand in hand with desktop server, uh, that... Um, are all de designed in order to improve workflow. So I, I do see the art continuing to go up at a steady pace. We don't want to grow too fast, too quickly, or I, you know, when I'm, I guess that's redundant, but um, <laughs> we are, But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, and and we like the steady path that we're on, which is a steady, if you look at our trend line, it is a really good steady growth pattern that we're seeing. Um, and every month is kind of a record breaker of the month before. So um, we're, we're really happy with that. And I don't see any reason to think that it's, it's going to uh, discontinue, especially knowing some of the things that we have on the horizon. Good. Hi, Mark. Um, <clears throat> You're an active person in the community. Can you tell us maybe kind of what, where your favorite aspects are, whether it's WordCamp, you know, getting on these podcasts and, and YouTube videos and whatnot, or maybe some even some spots that uh, you think are creative and new in the community? Boy, I love all of it. I mean, I have to say, um, I, I, I'm 47 years old, so within our community, I, I'm probably in the upper, I don't know, third or, or, or fourth, Age-wise, uh, as far as uh, people go uh, within with uh, within the community, but boy, I have essentially my whole life been preaching that um, that the key to success is is to make sure that when we all do well, we all do well, and that to me is what a community is about, and um, I, I feel like at this point in my life. Uh, very fortunate to have found WordPress because I've lived quite a, a life in the technology world uh, and, and I feel very lucky to have lived the life that I have in the technology world but I've never found the community uh, in the same way that I that I had always envisioned it until I found the WordPress community so uh, not to sound too cultish or to you know join my cult get a toaster kinda of thing but um, Colts give away toasters? 
Well, mine does. But... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but I I really there's not a lot of aspects. Of course, you have the politics, and you do have some of the things that get into any organization. But I I really do have a fondness for almost every aspect of the community. I love going to word camps. I love these podcasts. Um, I, I love just getting out and talking to people. And by the way, prior to WordPress and my involvement with it, I hated 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 conferences. I would, I'd rather poke my eyes out with rusty nails than go to a conference. <laughs> That's how much I hate conferences. And um, word camps are really the first experience I had where I was like, hey, this is pretty cool because people are down to earth. And uh, the first word camp I went to was word camp San Diego. I think it was 2012. And um, it was just amazing to me that these guys who are kind of superstars in the WordPress community would get up and, and give us, you know, a talk and post their mobile phone numbers on their slides or whatever, you know, how to contact me. I'd be like, this guy's supposedly a superstar and he doesn't have a gatekeeper, you know, because that's the mentality that, that I was used to. So it, it um, yeah, just, there's, there's not really a lot of aspects of the WordPress community that I don't like. It's definitely pretty awesome. Isn't uh, isn't the whole uh, server press team going to WordCamp San Diego this year? I think we will all be there. Um, I'm the one who has to fly out there. Uh, Greg uh, lives about an hour north of San Diego, and Steve lives there in San Diego. So um, it's not like it's a huge uh, undertaking for us all to show up at WordCamp San Diego. Awesome. So I I love talking to you about the community, and I've talked to you about this before. I even I mean. Um, hit you up recently when I was putting together a, a talk for a local meetup. Like, just you know, mm -hmm. uh, how how does the WordPress community play a role? Why should somebody consider getting involved, and how do you do that? And, and uh, boy, you just really had a lot of good stuff to say. Some really cool points um, that really made me go, "Wow, that you're you're absolutely right." You know, made me uh, really inspired. Boy, I wish I could remember. About, like, I wish I could remember what those points were. Um, I think okay. I think that. The only way that a community can work is that if everybody puts something into it. One of the things that I do think that the, the community doesn't necessarily do very well, uh, presentation coming soon, um, is uh, <coughs> let noobs in the WordPress world realize that they can start con contributing to the community day one. Um, and and it's very valuable. It doesn't matter if you're not a developer. It doesn't matter if you're not a designer. I can tell you it took me a while before I got involved in the community like actively because I thought I had to be a certain something. And the reality is every single one of us brings a strength and experience to the community that nobody else has or does. Um, and, and sometimes it's true. Sometimes Contributing to the community may be something like volunteering for a WordCamp and moving tables or, or chairs or something. Uh, sometimes uh, you might discover that, hey, my area here has some WordPress developers, but we don't have a meetup group. Maybe I can start a meetup. Um, there's so many different ways that you can contribute to the community. And, and once again, I, you know, I, I know that they say that, uh, what is it, a rising tide, you know. Uh, floats all boats. Floats all boats or whatever that is. I just make it simpler than that because I'm I'm older and not as you know I can't remember things very well. I just I just like to say that when we all do well, we all do well, and I really believe that. Um, you don't walk into a word camp feeling like you're gonna be around a bunch of competition. Yes, there are people there that do exactly the same thing you do, sort of. Um, but the reality is, you're going there to um, to be around friends. And people who want to see you do well, and 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 hopefully you can do things to help them do well too. Uh, and like I said, everybody can do it. And sometimes contributing to the community is something as simple as just asking a question. Um, believe it or not, not having the answer, just having the question sometimes is a contribution to the community. I saw a conversation on Twitter about a month ago that David Bissett down in Miami was talking about that very same topic, and he even mentioned I think it was a meetup night, and he even said. 
going to get the pizzas for the meetup is contributing just because it's something mm -hmm. he, as the organizer, didn't have to do. And right. There's so many little things that go into these meetups. Right. And Absolutely. Meetups. And it's just it's all of that right. combined, and I mean right. the community is just so strong that we just help each other, and we, it just it just works. And, and you know what? As a speaker, I love it when people who just learned about WordPress yesterday come up and start asking me questions. They don't even do it necessarily in the uh, presentation. Afterwards, they come and seek me out, and they just ask me questions. And uh, I love that. I love that because there it tells me that they're wanting to be active parts of the community. Um, I, I've heard at so many word camps, and it's part of one of my other presentations. You know, where people say, uh, "I've got nothing to give." You know, so many of these people here are so talented, and I've got nothing to give. Um, it's a cop out, and I was one of those guys, so I can say it's a cop out. I wish that I had started getting more involved in the community six months or a year prior to when I actually did. Yeah, yeah, I and I, I love that. Um, all that you have to say on the matter, Mark, and um, that's really inspiring. And you're right dead on on every point. Uh, the community makes a big difference, and you've talked about how the community made a big difference to your business, to your server press, and how the community made, is uh, something that um, you're obviously wanting to get your children involved in early on, which I think speaks a lot to it. Um, so, And, and I, I want to point out that I'm not forcing my kids to become developers. I want my kids to learn that whatever they do in life, wherever they decide to go professionally, that they should seek out community, a community type atmosphere where people build each other up because it will make whatever they do professionally that much more rewarding. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's awesome. Um, I, we almost could end on that, although we've got just a few wrap up questions that we've got to ask. We've got a little over on time today just because of technical issues, but. Let's power through, Mark. We're just going to ask a few final quick questions, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. So, um, first of all, tell us uh, where in real life people could bump into Mark Benzakeen. Do you attend uh, your local meetup groups? Do you have WordCamps scheduled to attend other events that you'll be present at for the 2015 year? Um, the only WordCamp that I have absolutely set in stone is uh, WordCamp San Diego. Minneapolis is a 99 percenter. Milwaukee, okay, that's a 100 percenter. I'm one of the organizers there. And uh, Milwaukee, I have to say, I'm, I'm saying this completely objectively. Milwaukee is the most fun you will have at a WordCamp, <laughs> or none. We, we work really hard to make it a, a memorable experience by being a lot of fun. And, and you'll get a lot of great information, but it's fun. Um, I will also be in Chicago, Chicago WordCamp. I really want to make the Prestige Conference that's going to be in Minneapolis later this year. I didn't get to make uh, Prestige this year, uh, and I'm a, a huge fan, and Kiko is a personal friend of mine, and I think he's doing great things. Uh, so I'll probably be at Prestige. Um, and I am just now getting to the point where I'm sitting down and looking at the year and trying to figure out which WordCamps I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be attending this year. Well, like I always do, I'm going to plug anything in Michigan. I hope to see you uh, in this way. I'll be seeing you. I, you know, I plan to do Ann Arbor again. I thought you guys put on a really good uh, WordCamp last year. And uh, another uh, fun WordCamp this year was Omaha. And uh, Dan Griffiths is another friend of mine, and I, I like to support him too. So I'll probably do Omaha as well. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks for sharing all of those. Um, okay, so... Uh, next question, um, who in the WordPress community uh, really inspires you, Mark Benzke? And also, piggybacking on that, who are good suggestions for people that you think we might want to invite on the show? Sure. Okay, so um, inspires me. Uh, I, I'm probably not the first person to say this, uh, but I got to say, um, Pippin is really an inspiration to me. Uh, not because of what the product that he puts out, which by the way is a fantastic product, um, all his products are awesome, but because uh, I've been fortunate enough to actually spend some time with uh, with Pippin and uh, you know some one-on-one -on -one and whatnot, the guy is just a humble, really good guy. Period. What you see is what you get with him. He's really helpful. Uh, I met him a couple of years ago before, kind of before anybody knew who he was and got to spend a little bit of time with him and then this last year in Omaha got to spend more time with him. 
and he hasn't changed. He's he's he is just a really good, helpful, smart guy. Um, and you know, business aside and all that other stuff, I, I just I'm a fan of Pippins, uh, and uh, I kind of look at it once again as the old guy, you know, as if this is what the next generation is bringing up. I'm pretty inspired. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, Pippin was on for episode 23. Right, I saw, I saw that. Yep. So. Uh, so I can't yeah. suggest him, but you asked me who inspired me. So. Um, exactly. Right on. Uh, you know, uh, another guy that you might want to ask uh, is uh, Ben Fox from uh, Sidekick is a great guy. Um, you might want to give uh, him a call. Natalie MacLeese, uh is just an awesome person. She organizes WordCamp LA. I don't know if she's doing it again this year, but she did in the last two years, and she did a pretty bang-up job of that. And she's also involved with the Girl Develop It uh, organization that I talked about. Um, Suzette Frank is always a lot of fun too. Of course, Natalie and Suzette are kind of two peas in a pod there. But um, uh, those would be a few people that I'd recommend. Um, if if you can get either of my partners on at any given time, uh, those guys are a, a lot of fun as well. So those are some really good suggestions. Thanks for that, Mark. Yeah. I totally, uh, I totally agree on all counts. All right. Um, so I want to be mindful of your time. So. Uh, to wrap up, are there, are there any topics or questions that we didn't ask that you wanted to cover, or any or anything that you want to share with anybody that's uh, that's very topical for you? Um, well, uh, this is uh, this is probably a little bit uncomfortable for me to, to get into, but um, I, I did talk about the family thing, and we are working on uh, refinishing the attic so that we can have more bedrooms up there. And uh, we just uh, wrote a really big check to get a lot of that done. There may be a tilt campaign coming to see if I can uh, crowdfund a little bit of it. So uh, uh, I'm not really one to uh, walk around with my hand out, but I, you know, I, I feel like uh, we um, we we want to give these kids a, a stable environment, and sometimes you have to look. Uh, for some outside help for some of that, so that's kind oh, of that's awesome. Yeah. We're really inspired by what you do. I know personally that it, everything that you talked about is really, really, really amazing, and I commend you. And um, that really is is an important topic to me. Um, right. We've talked a little bit about that offline, right? Yeah. So how how can somebody kind of uh, follow that or stay on top of? Uh, um, I've got a website called uh, Two to Five, and that's T W O. T O F I V E dot us. Um, basically, I named it that because we quite literally one day had two kids and the next day had five. So it's two to five dot us. I try to blog there pretty regularly, although things have been a little hectic lately, and uh, we just got through a pretty nasty uh, bug. Me in particular. Uh, that lasted about three weeks or so. So uh, I'm starting to get back into the blog with updates. Feel free to visit it and uh, you know make uh, comments as uh, as they uh, move you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mark. We'll definitely be dropping a link to that and encourage anybody to check it out because uh, I think it's definitely worthwhile. And, and once again, for my part, I tip my hat to you because you guys are doing good stuff. Thanks. It's a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. Definitely. All right. Uh, well, for for me, I say thank you, Mark, very much for coming on the show. It was a thank pleasure. Thank you for having me. me. Sorry Can't that I caused technical you. problems. Uh, don't uh, worry about it. Not you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was my fault, anyways. Well, yes, but I, I still think I had something to do with it somewhere. In there. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk to Carrie about that. Compare notes. Yeah, yeah. Carrie, I, I'm sure that Carrie doesn't think I had anything to do with her internet going out either. But <laughs> now, we, now we all know. All future uh, shows that have Mark on heads up. I, I will <laughs> never be asked to be on another podcast again. I mean, that two is for two. true. This is true. Oh, for two. Yes, it I yeah. think I'm going to put out a PSA tomorrow. That's right. Good morning, everybody. Well, you I, might I be hope. Thinking about asking Mark to come on your show. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there's only two people watching anyway, right? <laughs> right. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. All right, Thank guys. You, Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, thanks a lot, Mark. All right. Have a good night.